Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Faith and Grace Church. It's Bible study time. We want to thank God for His great grace. Thank you for joining us tonight. Please, before we go on, why not give somebody a call, invite him or her to join us right now. It is time to learn from the Master. Our Master is Jesus Christ. Is the author and the finisher of our faith. Invite your friends, invite your family members, let them join us as we are starting right now. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, before we go on, I want to call on Pastor Nicias to give us the opening prayers. Maybe you need a mic. Hallelujah. Our precious Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we adore you, Lord. Hallelujah. We appreciate you, Father, for the gift of life. Thank you, Jesus. May your name be exalted in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you, because Father. Because it is the day you have made. Yes, Lord. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, Father. Father, take the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We are gathered again to learn from you. Mm. We pray that you teach us what you want us to know today in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Father, Lord God Almighty, for the servants you are going to use this evening, mm. for more unction, Amen. for more anointing, Amen. for more strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray for we that will be listening, Lord, mm. for a hearing here and a doing part. Amen. And we pray, Lord, that none of this word will stand against us. Amen. At the end of age, in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, before we go and let us let's worship the Lord. Let's let's lift up his holy name. Let's tell him that he is all that matters. Amen. I want you to sing along. Let's sing it as if we mean the song. Mm, well, mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Lord. Father. Yes, Lord. You are all, all that matters, Jesus. You are, you are all that matters. I'll have like room for two. You, you and I, Jesus. You are all, Jesus. You are all, all that matters. You are all, all that matters. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Oh, hey, oh, oh, hey. All that matters, Lord. Oh, hey, oh, oh, hey. All that matters, yes, Lord. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, hey. oh, yes, Lord. You are all that matters, Lord. Oh, mm -hmm. 
connected to this program that only you matters to them. Amen. We ask Master Jesus teach us what you want us to learn tonight. Amen. You are the teacher. We are your students. Holy Spirit of God use our mouth as your megaphone. Amen. Out of our hearts are flow rivers of living water tonight. Amen. Grant us understanding. Amen. Give us wisdom. And give us revelation. In Jesus name. I pray for all my brethren online right now. That your hand will rest on them. Amen. They are to be receptive. Amen. You will give every one of us. Ears that ears. Amen. Lord almighty. Heart that receives. Eyes that can see big Amen. things. We bless your name. There shall be no error tonight. Amen. Lord, let the, let the gospel go with simplicity. Amen. And your people will be blessed. Amen. And we will be blessed. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your anointing. Thank you, Thank you Father, for unction to function. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to welcome everyone online. Thank you for joining us. We are learning from the Master. The parable of Jesus. Good. We are on parable number 29 today. And the parable for today is titled The Parable of the Lowest Seat at Feast. The, the parable of the lowest seat at the feast. But before we go into today's parable, let's look at um, the lesson. Let's remind ourselves of last week's lesson so that. We can always um, refresh in our mind. It was the parable of the Pharisees and the tax collector. The parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. And you know, the focus is all about praying. You know, teaching us what is key. The kind of prayers God answers. The key things that are, that are involved, you know. Christ says, talks about, you know, uh, shows the story of two people, the Pharisee, standing at the middle of the, 
synagogue or the temple, praying, boasting, I'm not like this man, I'm not like that one, I, boasting of what he does as a religious person, showing how religious and how righteous he is. And we are as another one, the tax collector, the one that have been, you know, considered as outcasts. Said he was beating his chest, not worthy to stand before God because of all his sin, and he was just crying for mercy. And Christ confirmed to us that this one, this tax collector, not this Pharisees, went home, all his prayers answered. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, tonight, the lesson we can see there is if we are truly broken hearted over our sin, we can be assured of God's boundless love and forgiveness in Christ. Amen. Amen. In addition, we must not make the mistake of comparing ourselves with others and gaining confidence from what we see in that comparison. We must not compare ourselves. Paul says, he that, you know, com pardon? compares himself with another one is not wise. It's a foolish thing to do. You don't compare yourself with anybody. Our, I mean, the only person we compare ourselves is with God. And no match. We are no match. Yeah, hallelujah. So, in fact, Jesus specifically warns us against this attitude at the beginning of that parable, he said, make sure we don't, you know, compare ourselves with other people, just like this Pharisee. So, when we try to justify ourselves by comparing ourselves to others, we naturally end up despising them. That's the evil of comparing ourselves with other people. We are trying to say that we are better than that one. And that is not the spirit of Christ. That is not the spirit of 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 Jesus. Amen. Amen. So it, it also taught us humility. That parable and we learn humility. Our standard of comparison is God himself and we all are, we all fall short of his glory. All are, we are falling short of the glory of God. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. So today's parable is um, between, um, it still talks about the the parable um, of the lowest seat at feast. This we can see in the book of Luke, Gospel of Luke chapter 14. Gospel of Luke chapter 14. Hallelujah. This this parable is very direct. You know, let's, let's turn to that passage first so that we can appreciate what we are learning tonight. And uh, please, we want every one of us to be ready to contribute. Let's make it very interactive, you know, from verse 7 to 14. When Jesus noticed that all who had come to the dinner were trying to sit in the seat of honor, mm. near the head of the table, mm. he gave them this advice. Yeah. When you are invited to a wedding feast, mm. don't sit in the seat of honor. Mm. What if someone who is more distinguished than you has also been invited? The host will come and say, give this person your seat. Then you will be embarrassed mm. and you will have to take whatever seat is left at the foot of the table. Let's see. Instead, Take the lowest place mm -hmm. at the foot of the table. Mm. Then when your host sees you, he will come and say, Friend, mm. we have a better place for you. Mm. Then you will be honored in front of all the other guests. Hallelujah. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Mm. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Mm. Then he turned to his host. When you put on a luncheon or banquet, he said, mm -hmm. don't invite your friends, mm -hmm. brothers, relatives, and rich neighbors, mm -hmm. for they will invite you back 
Mm. And that will be your only reward. Mm. Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, mm. the lame, and the blind. Mm. Then, at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think this 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 um very touching and it's very direct. I think the lesson is very direct here. We don't need to we don't need to to try to decode anything of all the parable of Jesus Christ. This one is very, very direct. It's just teaching us how to behave when we go out, when we go out to functions, and it also teaches us how to behave when we organize function. So you can see that this parable talks to two, I mean, the two people, the guests and the hosts. Amen. Amen. Have you been, you know, a guest in an event? This parable speaks to all of us. Or you are the one organizing an event. God wants you to organize an event and get a reward. That's God for you. He wants you to have a reward. Even when you organize events. That is everything we do in life. God, God wants to, wants some, I mean, wants a reward. There must be a spiritual benefit in whatever we do. Amen. So let's go into our outline tonight. In most of Jesus' parables, he puts the burden on the listeners to interpret it and figure out what it means in his life. However, in the parable of the lowest seat at feast, Jesus tells the listeners how to behave. Very direct. For Jesus to speak plainly means he did not want anyone to miss the meaning. And what is he talking about? That humility really matters. Amen. Amen. So I, I want us to get this from line one. You can see this parable is teaching us humility. We've been looking at prayers. The last, the last parable actually shows the importance of humility when you come before God. So, it is not when we come before God alone that we must remain humble. Even when we are before other people, we're supposed to maintain that it be humble spirit. Yes. Exactly. Humility is, I mean, is key. It's the bedrock upon which our Christian life is battered. Humility is very, very key. You know, the last parable talks about praying you have to be humble when you come before God. So today we are seeing God is trying to show us that when we go out to an event, remain humble. Very direct. Let's remain humble. Why? Because when you go to an event and you are looking for the better seat or the better position or I mean a place exalted. You want to be recognized. You want to be recognized. You are exalting yourself. You are placing yourself you feel that you are better than other people, other people in this event. So I should be on this high seat, you know. So, so that humility really matters. Note, though, that he presented his message in a very tactful way to his Pharisee listeners. He told his listeners that he was speaking of a marriage feast. You know, just to avoid anything which might offend them by any air of direct reproach. Reproof. This was actually nothing new as similar advice had already been given in the book of Proverbs. We have this in the book of Proverbs chapter 25. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 25, verses 6 to 7. Solomon spoke about this. Hallelujah. Humility is key. Don't demand an audience with the king mm. or push for a place among the great. Wow. It's better to wait for an invitation to the head table mm. than to be sent away in public disgrace. Wow. Just because you've seen 
something mm. don't be in a hurry no. five to six five uh, to oh no six sorry six to seven, seven. yeah it says my own version says do not exalt yourself in the presence of the king and do not stand in the place of the great for it is better that he says to you come up here than that you should be put lower in the presence of the prince whom you in your eyes have seen so you can see our lord jesus christ what happened when, when we look at the context in this parable you discover what led jesus christ to teach this parable you know by citing this scripture you know making reference he did not quote it directly but he applied it the bible say he saw so he told a parable to those who were invited when he noted how they chose the best places saying to them you know as they are they were all coming they were looking at the best place in the party in the wedding area they were looking at you looking out for the high table i mean the best seat to sit he noticed that and he could see that this thing is coming from their heart it shows the state of their mind it shows that look these people are high-minded they feel that look they deserve the best the best position so he told them that parable now why is humility so important to a Christian? Why is it so important? You know, I, I, I want this is a general question. To you, why do you think humility is important? Let's let's send in our comments because I want us to share it. Now, from, from the scriptures, the Bible has 106 stories emphasizing humility. 106 stories. Faith is featured in 104 stories. This is a research when you research the Bible. And love is featured only 47 times. That is just to tell you that humility is key. I mean, they have to do a lot of teaching on humility because people are so high minded. Does this tell you something? Humility may well be called the queen of the Christian grace. To know our own sinfulness and weakness and to feel our need of Christ is the very beginning of saving religion. In the kingdom of God, humility forms the foundation laid by Christ for which nothing else can supply. Amen. So, from the parable we, 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 we had last week about the Pharisees and the tax collector, Christ says this Pharisee cannot receive anything from God. Why? Because he's high-minded. He's not humble. He's just emphasizing his own greatness, you know, trying to show how important he is, how religious he is, but Christ says that Pharisee cannot receive anything from God. A humble, I mean, a, a, a prideful person cannot receive anything from God. The Bible says, God resists the pride, the proud, and he gives grace to the humble. So it's like this. When God sees an humble person coming to him, what happened? He pushed him back. No, 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 no. Okay, go back, go back, go back. God just, God does not tolerate a new prideful people. But those people who are humble, He welcomes them. He gives them more grace. That we can also see in that parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. So, for example, let's consider this spiritual gift. When you look at all the spiritual gifts, teaching, administration, healing, prophecy, knowledge, charity, humility. From this list, humility is a grace within the reach of every true Christian. We all cannot be teachers. We all cannot be miracle workers. We all cannot be 
administrators who are gonna be and engage in miracle of healing and all that but we don't need much to be able to humble ourselves every christian can be engaged in the spirit of humility amen so from this list humility is a grace within the reach of every true christian not everyone has money to give away not everyone has time and opportunity to work directly for jesus we don't all have gifts of speech and knowledge for preaching and teaching. We are not all good managers or administrators. We can't all heal, but everyone can demonstrate his commitment to Christ by his humility. If you can do nothing else, you can strive to be humble. Amen. I think that this should seem to us. You see, God is looking for a humble heart. And this should be displayed everywhere. Before God in prayers, go before him with humility. And outside there, when you go out to events, in weddings, in, um, you know, in, uh, outside events, other people are there. You must be, they must be able to spot that this child, this one is a child of God. Through his humble, you know, attitude is very important humility counts humility counts hallelujah praise the lord so if you know if you have any other reason i mean if you are, we, we want to share the issue of humility because my prayer is as we continue to grow in the lord we will continue to grow in humility you know i notice that some people the longer they still become Christian, I mean, they are, they are they less, they, they pride in their length of being Christian. I mean, you understand? They say, I've been Christian over 35 years. You can't talk that. To me. You can't. By now, I should be this. I mean, they, 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 they pride themselves in, whereas as children of God, as growing believers, a sign that we are growing in the Lord is that we will continue to grow in humility. That is, that is, that's, that's a unique thing, you know. You know, God, God said something about Moses. Do you know that at 40, Moses was, I mean, he saw himself as the deliverer of the children of Israel. So he went out to deliver the children of Israel. I mean, he went to the field, saw the children of Israel. Two of them were fighting. He tried to separate them. He saw one that was trying to, you know, he, he has to kill one for the other because he's, he's, he's the, he sees himself as a deliverer. And when he discovered that, look, it's not going to work, he ran away. Do you know that after 40 years, when Moses came back, the Bible said that God described Moses as the most humble man on earth. Do you, do, you, do you understand, ma'am? That this Moses is the most humble person on earth. God has taken away that, that sense of, oh, I am your deliverer. Ah, I have the power to do it. He took that away from him in the 40 years of his walk in the wilderness so that by the time he comes back, he comes with a humble heart. Amen. Amen. Okay, please. Do we still have genuine humility or should we still add the humility of the lips to the kind of humility that Jesus is talking about? E.g., someone who is always praising people, mm. superior or direct boss, mm. and doing eye service at work mm. just to gain. Sorry. Just to gain promotion. Mm. Should we also add that to humility? When the person moves an inch away from the person, he or she will start murmuring or being gossip mm -hmm. behind the person. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I, I like that comment and that contribution. You see, by the time we move down in our... When... when, when Christ says, go and sit down in the lowest place. You know, 
it can also be faith. Just as what he has said. It can also be faith. You can claim to be humble through eye service and all those things. Even the Bible condemns it. That is not humility. You know, it is possible for someone to go and sit down in the lowest place to show that, look, look, I am here. I am. You can sit at the lowest place and be showing signs. Write it on your face and look, because Christ said um, people should be humble. And you say, I'm here with your countenance, with your behavior, trying to do eyes up. You know, I'm a very humble person. You know, I'm here, this and that. You know, trying to, so that the owner of the event will not forget you there. So be doing that. This issue of eye service is not humility. A humble Christian, a humble spirit does not look unto man for favor. You understand? It does not look, does not depend on man for favor, but depends on God for favor. Because it sees God as the one who elevates. Whoever is doing that, you know, such promotion will not last. That is not humility. That the Bible says such a person has received his reward. Let the boss promote that one. It is not God. You understand? When the Bible talks about humble yourself, and you know, at the right time, God will exalt at the right time. You know, it is God that will lift you up, not man. He can send man to do that, but it is initiated by God. Amen. That is not humility. That's not the humility we are talking about. People can fake anything. For example, if you are a Christian and you put a first cap or you wear a t-shirt and write, I'm a very humble man. You understand? That in itself is not humility. You understand? If you just have a t-shirt and write, very humble. Very humble. Is that humility? I want your comments. Can you wear that kind of t-shirt? I am very humble. That's not humility. You are already praising yourself. That in itself is priding in humility is, is pride in itself. You know? So we don't we don't encourage eye service, lip service, you know, because you want favor, want promotion. No, it is God that promotes, not man. Hallelujah. Thank you for that um, contribution. So, now, let's go to the outline. Say, go and sit down in the lowest part. When you look at that part, when we are the lower place, we aren't there just to be noticed so we can go up higher. You understand? If you are in a office, you are doing everything to be noticed so that they can promote you. That's exactly what we are saying. That is not humility. You are not in the lower seat to be noticed. Nor are we miserable there. Or you feel that I don't supposed to be in this level. I don't supposed to be on this seat. I don't supposed to be in this position. So you are grumbling there. You feel miserable. How can I how can everyone be sitting over there? Because Jesus Christ said we should sit in the lower seat. I'm just, well, I feel, I feel humiliated. Let me just, and you feel, you begin to grumble. Yes, please. There's a comment. Okay. That's not humility. Mm -hmm. That's the type I'm against. Yeah. Telling you, saying it in Yoruba, mm -hmm. telling you a pedestal 10 minutes at a time, <laughs> 10 times at a time. That's mm -hmm. ad service. That is that is you are trying to announce yourself that you are you are you are here. Please, I need you and please take me to where I'm supposed to be in my higher position. That is not what we are talking. That is not what Christ is teaching, and that is what Pharisees do. You know. So, now are we miserable there, and letting everyone know by our facial expression that we really don't belong there? In a gathering, you know, I have experienced it several times, you know. You sit amongst your members, among the people 
Oh, they will be telling you, go up there, go. Ah, pastor, you're supposed to sit at that place. No. Why can't I sit amongst you guys? We are together. You know, do you know that one good thing, an experience, something happened. When they, when they came to arrest Jesus, do you know that they could not identify him? Because there was no difference between him and his disciples. Not until um, Judas. Judas came and greeted him with a kiss. You know? So that's just to tell you that, look, staying in the lower seat does not mean that, uh, doesn't mean you have to show it in your facial expressions that you really don't belong there. That is not humility. So Jesus isn't merely teaching good manners, but a lifestyle that in loneliness of mind, esteem others better than himself. It should be our lifestyle. Humility should be our lifestyle. We should be able, we should esteem others better than ourselves. Let's look at that scripture in Philippians 2. I think this two. person is trying to say that mm. greeting several times, sorry, how are you? I mean, it's not part of humility. It's no, high it's service. It's service. Yes. There, is, there is a place, there is a place where where greeting is genuine. You understand? You know you are doing it without any if your motive, God sees the heart. Even the boss you are greeting on their tribes, you will begin to wonder what I mean. This, this one is He's trying, those to, trying ask to ask for something. Oh, he's looking for favor. Mm -hmm. You understand? Or the celebrant is going up and down several times. You are sitting at that corner. Ah, well done. Um, you will start greeting that one hundred times. You know, just to draw his or attention that you are here. I mean. So don't forget you can take to the eye seat. No, no, no. That is not humility. And that's what we are trying to show here. Philippians chapter, let's see, Philippians chapter 2 verse 3. We must learn to esteem others better than ourselves. Philippians. Don't be selfish. Mm -hmm. Don't try to impress others. Yeah. Be humble. Hmm. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Yes. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. This is humility. This is what Christ is teaching us. You understand? Let's, let's, let's have a lowly mind. That does not mean that you are... You are, you are depriving yourself or you are becoming, you are bringing yourself low. No. But your mind see others better than yourself. You see, this thing doesn't remove anything from you. It only shows the kind of spirit of Christ that is in us. He said, but in loneliness of mind, that is not with high-minded, not in high-mindedness, you know, seeing ourselves better than the other one. Do you know that if two people are, if two arrogant or two proudful, you know, person are coming, meeting themselves, that one, one will be looking at the other one with a high mind, shoulder up, you know, and the other one also raising up a shoulder and you know, both, both of them will pass each other. They cannot even... One will be expecting the other one to say hello, you know, in our culture. You know, some people find it difficult to even greet, you know, first or anything. Or one will be expecting the other one to greet first. All this is a sign of high-mindedness. But when you t see two humble people coming together, you will see the other one esteeming the other one better and the other one esteeming the other one better. They will meet with a humble heart. You will see the way they meet is different from when two arrogant people, high-minded people meet. Two high-minded people will meet with their shoulder eye, with their eyes off. Two humble people will meet with a low-minded I mean, state and they will humble themselves. Amen. May God give us the spirit of Christ. Amen. May that spirit continue to grow in ourselves. Amen. He said, instead, we joyfully embrace the lower place. 
we aren't filled with such a high opinion of ourselves that we think we don't belong there, then we are rewarded before the Lord. To truly humble yourself is to get your, your eyes off yourself and to start living an other-centered life. Other-centered life. Humility means taking your eyes from yourself. I am this. I am that. I am this. I am I have this. I have that. My, you, you'll be thinking of who you are. That will make you cannot be humble that way. But when you take your eyes off from whom you are to put your eyes on the other one and see that one as even better than yourself. In fact, that is how God wants us to see other people. Make sure you see others better than yourself. There won't be trouble in this world if we're able to have that attitude that other people are better than me. It's not a cause. It's not, it doesn't remove anything from you. If we see other people as better than ourselves, do you know that I won't be able to hurt that one? Yes, please. Do we have any comment? Yes. Or any question? You can ask question, please. Yeah. Won't you be stepped on severely or taken for granted? Be seen as a weak person when we practice Christ's kind of humility. Can someone practice Christ's kind of humility with a Lagos boss conductor after being dealt with by the conductor? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I wanted to note one thing that the Bible for Lagos people is the same Bible for Ibadan people or for American people or UK people, we have the same code of conduct. You understand? I have, in so many instances, you know, seen how we can use our character to touch the life of Lagos conductors. I have seen it several times. It has happened. The same person times. said, mm. how do we become humble? Yeah. Knowing that it cannot be achieved by man's nature. Yes, humility is the things of the spirit. That is why we need to connect with the Holy Spirit. It is the absence of the Holy Spirit. It is, it is because we don't give the Holy Spirit room in our life. That is why the church is it's like it has no power. You understand? It is the help of the Holy Spirit that can make us do what we are talking about. So we need more of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. The, the, I mean, the answer to that question. Yes, it is the Holy Spirit. We need to we need to see ourselves as spiritual people. You are called spiritual because you are the Spirit of Christ. You understand? Not man's nature. Not man's nature. You see, there's no way when you enter the bus in, in, in Lagos or whatever and wherever or wherever you are, you are different. See yourself as different people. If, if, if the conductor is harassing everybody in the bus, by the Spirit of God, he won't be able to harass you. And if he harasses you, the way you answer, the way you respond... We make him to pause. It has happened several times. I'm talking from experience. You cannot react the way other people are reacting. That is the difference. That's where humility comes in. You understand? So it is possible by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So let's let's um, move on. Uh, uh, thank you for that question. Let's still ask this question. You know, I, I, I like the way she put it. It says, Jesus kind of humility. You understand? You know, Jesus himself is our standard. Christ will not ask you to do what he has not done. You understand? That is why the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That is the mind of humility, a humble mind. We'll get there. You see, when we seek to take honor to ourselves, we will always be humbled 
we will always be humble, if not on earth, then for all of eternity. If you are trying to show whom you are, if a, if a conductor, a bus conductor, or anyone tries to harass you, and you say, look, I will show you whom, whom I am. Ah, that is not, that's not the spirit of humility. Mm -mm. That's not the spirit of humility. You know, in such case, we will receive, you know, humiliation. It is better we humble ourselves than to be humbled. You understand? Let's, we must always pray, God, clothe me with a garment of humility. Don't pray that God humble me. It's a, it's a, it, 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 there are two opposite things. You know, God will humble those who exalt themselves. That is humiliation. You understand? But when you pray, God, clothe me with your garment of humility. You are praying, God, give me the spirit of humility like the spirit of Christ. You understand? So, you can see, whoever take want to take honor to himself, we always be humbled. If not on earth, then for all of eternity. The promise of exaltation for the humble and humiliation for the proud is one ultimately fulfilled in, eter in eternity. God will not on, you know, overlook your humble life. And just as God will not um, overlook your life of arrogance. Try and get it. Everything will be settled in eternity, if not here. There are a lot of people who are shown behave so arrogantly, so pridefully, and then God, you see, we allow little things to God will humiliate them. Jesus had the right to teach on this subject because he fulfilled it perfectly. He is the ultimate example of someone who deserved the highest seat but took the lowest seat and we move, was moved up to the highest seat. Hallelujah. The Bible says, he did not, let's look at that scripture. Let's read it from uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter 2. Let's go back to Philippians chapter 2. When we see the example of Christ's humility, that is why Paul writes in verse 5, said, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be, which was also in Christ in, uh, Jesus. Go on, man. You must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Amen. I want you to take note of that. My sister, my brother, everyone hearing me, we must all have the same attitude of Christ. Though he was God. You can see, as God, he has a seat in the heavenly. I sit there. He did not think of equality with God uh -huh. as something to think. He, 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 he relinquished his high seat. He took the lower seat. The lowest seat you can think of. God bless. Instead, yeah. he gave up his divine privileges. Wow. He hmm. took the humble position of a slave. It, that is... That's a good. Uh, that's that's a good translation. That's the correct translation. He actually came as a bond servant. Bond servant means slave. He took the place. A king, the king of kings, now become the slave. Can you imagine? Yes, please. And was born as human being hmm. when he appeared in human form. Yeah. He humbled himself. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death wow. on the cross. Wow. That is the height of humility. For the king of kings, who has a high seat, the high table, whatever you can talk of the table, is sitting right beside God the Father. He relinquished that seat. He left that seat, came down, and took, not if slaves don't sit. You understand? He came, he became slave. Slaves don't sit. So he took that position and took up the position of a man. And what? That is obeying the father. 
And the kind of death that only criminals do die, you know, is the one that he has, he has to die. Verse 9. Therefore. Yes, that's the key word. Therefore. Because he has done this, therefore, the Father will do this. God. <clears throat> therefore, if you can humble yourself, therefore, God will do that. That therefore must happen in our life. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor. Hallelujah. And gave him the name above all other names. Mm -hmm. That at the name of Jesus, yes. every knee should bow mm -hmm. in heaven and on earth mm -hmm. and under the earth. Yeah. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord mm. to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. He did not just get that title, he got it out of humility. Yes, please. This is a comment. Okay. How out, how out humility exemplified in our churches today? We know the people could not tell Jesus apart from his disciples. Mm -hmm. Sometimes because of how humble he was on earth. Mm. But today, a lot of church leaders attract the spotlight and love it. Mm. They what? appear to enjoy being honored and sometimes idolized. What do you say about this? Sir? Yeah, by the grace of God, that is why we need to learn Christ. He said, Learn. Do you know the reason why he said we should learn from him? He said, Because I am meek and lowly. The essence of, if we don't take anything out of this learning from the master series, please make sure you don't miss meekness and lowliness. Let's go back to that Matthew, that Matthew chapter 20, uh, Matthew 11, where we took our key scripture, 11, 28. Matthew 11, 28, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said, yeah. Come to me, mm -hmm. all of you who are weary and carry heavy bodies, mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. Let me teach you. Because I am humble. Because I am humble. And gentle at heart. And gentle at heart. And if you will find rest for your soul. Yes. That is the, I mean, if you don't take anything out of this series we are doing, Take humility out of it. Take humility out of it. That is why as, serv as servants of God, as ministers of the gospel, as representative of Christ, we are not to be praised. It is, it is, it is something that is, I mean, we did not learn that from Christ. We didn't learn that from Christ. We have not learned Christ that way. He said, come. He said, come. Learn from me, for I am meek and lowly. My own version says, meek and lowly. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You understand? So, please, because some, some people have been praised and they love it so, that does not make it right. And not all men of God welcomes such praise. Not the all men of God. Majority of them do. Yes, because the, the I mean the multitude are on their way. Don't you know that there are two ways? There's a road that is broad, and many are clinging to it. Mm -hmm. But the, the 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 road that leads to eternity is yeah. is narrow. Only very few are going into it. My prayer is that among the very few, I want to be in that place. Amen. You, I want you to be in that place. Amen. I want you to be in that. That is why we are learning Christ. <laughs> this is the end time. People of God, we need to come back to the feet of Jesus and do it right. Because we are praising some men of God that not every man of God love it. I know of men of God that will not like such praise. He will not like it. And you can see it in their life. You can see it in their in their posture, in the way they live their life. Mm -hmm. We have mentors that are taught. We can learn it from their life that look. They don't. They don't like such praises. And we are, that is why what I'm learning. 
and may God help us. Amen. You know, I, I said something on Sunday, you know, after I finished a, a seminary program with, okay, PhD in seminary, in, 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 yeah. in ministry, I was bathing, I was in the, in the, the bathroom, and the Spirit of God asked me, do I need the title or anointing? I say, Father, I need anointing. So, some people might notice that I don't bear that title, Reverend Doctor. It is, it's a warning. You know, it's a warning. The title is there. It's on paper. But that is not me. Most times you know, the title gets over one's head. That's the thing. God, has, God, God knows the kind of ministry is sending me to the assignment is sending me I'm to represent Christ and Christ is humble I supposed to be humble I have to set that title apart like today I was feeling informed okay on the paper is there reverend doctor but that is not I don't I don't flag it about I don't flag it about you better call me pastor K or or Pastor Luleye or Brother K. I love that. Please, I enjoy that. And my prayer is that anything that will come into my head that make my head blow, Lord, take it. Don't let it come my way. And that's my prayer for everyone. Because the, the thing flows from the leadership. If the leader is humble, the members will be humble. But if it is a gra gra leader, then the followers will, will, will also do gra gra. Like that. May God have mercy. Sorry, I used the word grand grand, you know. Amen. Yeah, this you are you are just being arrogant and be be pompous and being eddy. No. That's not the spirit of Christ. So let me just quickly finish the last few lines in this um, part. The warning also goes to the host. That is a celebrant, and I don't want us to miss this part. Jesus warns his host about the danger of pride when it comes to the guest list. Verse 20, uh, 12 and 14 of the passage said, you know, it is possible for us to show pride not only as the guest, but also as a host. And we do so through our guest list. When you are, you know, we know about a lot of parties or events that people will celebrate and look. They have to put somebody at the gate so that some people cannot enter there. Why? Well, because they are not in that class. But see Christ. He said, look, when you are doing that, when you are behaving that way, when you look at your guests, all these people can pay you back. You have received your reward. There is no reward for you in eternity. So I, I, I learned something in Christ that look, anything you do, any event you organize, God wants to reward you in it. If it has eternal value. Try and bring eternal value, add value, add eternal value into whatever event you are doing. If you are organizing a party, always consider the needy, the poor. People who cannot pay you back. I have, we have practiced this to God be the glory. We knew it. That Look, this is very important to consider the needy. He said, he said, do not ask. Simply means do not habitually ask. You know, I, I, we, want, we need to clarify. Yeah. We, we might have to continue next week if we can't because of time. No, we, have, we still have two minutes now. Okay. Yeah, we still have two minutes. Let's, let's try quickly. Uh, please go back to that scripture, uh, Luke chapter 14. Verse, where, verse, verse 12. Verse 12 says, Yes. Then he turned to his hosts. Hmm. When he put on a luncheon or a banquet, yeah. he said, mm -hmm. don't invite your friends, yes. your brothers, mm -hmm. your relatives, yeah. and rich neighbors, mm -hmm. for, they will invite, for they will invite you back, yeah. mm -hmm. and that will be your reward. Yeah. Instead, invite the poor, mm. the crippled, mm. the lame, yeah. and the blind. Amen. Then at the resurrection of the righteous, mm -hmm. God will reward you yeah. for inviting those who could not repay you. Can, can you see the mind of Christ? You can see that he wants you to get reward for what you are doing. Not here or not alone, even in eternity. You see, 
but I, I just want you to take note of because you will ask the question. So is it a sin to invite our relative? You see what Christ is saying there. The actual interpretation, the actual text talks about don't just invite. Don't only invite people you know. Let me read message translation to you so that you can appreciate what Christ is saying. Verse 12 says, then he turned to the host. The next time you put on a dinner, don't just invite your friends and family and rich neighbors. The kind of people who will return the favor. Invite some people who never get invited out. Don't just simply means don't limit your guests to only the people you know. People whom you know can also invite you tomorrow. Say, don't just deal with those people alone. So you, that, that's the idea. That's I wanted to take note of that. When God is not saying you should not um, invite um, people you know, but don't just limit it to that. So, um, he said, do not habitually ask. It isn't wrong to ever invite your friends, your brothers, and so on, but it is wrong to only invite such people. Do we associate only with people who can advance us or give some things to us? Or are we willing to be givers in relationship also? It is easy for us to limit our guest list to a few comfortable, easy people instead of reaching out to others. Do you know that some people have to run away from you because they feel that you are, you are not going to add to them. You are not going to, you, you'll be a liability. They don't want to relate with you. That is what Christ is teaching us here. Some of us that we only relate with people who matters. Who, who, who are of the same level. God says, don't do that. Jesus is telling us not to associate with people on a what's in need for me. You know, some people relate with people who only what they can gain, people can, who, who they can bless them. That is self-centered living. We are called to follow Jesus and he showed our others centered living. You shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. This kind of living will cost us something. And the full repayment comes only at the resurrection of the just. But is it worth it? It is worth it. The second point in this parable is the great importance of looking forward to the resurrection of the dead. You can see here that Christ has announced again, make us to know that there is going to be resurrection one day. There's going to be rapture one day. One day we are going to rise and be with the Lord. This is another point in this parable. My prayer is that none of us will miss the rapture. And none of us will miss our reward. We will not lose our reward. So try and do things so that you can have reward in eternity. That's, that, that's, I, I don't know if you have any, any other comment there? No. Any other contribution? Thank you so oh, much for coming. comment. Okay. Do we say that Saul of Tarsus yeah. was humiliated by God so he could turn to Christ instead, aiding the disruption of the gospel? Oh, okay, okay, okay. The, the, you know, you see, there are ways by which God will arrest people without pursuing them. You know, God did not leave his throne. Understand? He only said his word. He, Saul had this word and spoke to Saul to show him that, look, I am God. You see, when you look at Paul, before now, he thought he was doing the will of God. You understand? So it was, it was the will of God arresting Saul so that he can become what God wants him to be. You know, when God arrests people, it's a sign of humiliation too. That look, I am God. I don't need to run after you before I get you. You are running somewhere and I just arrested you. That is God for you. You understand? And the same Paul began to understand what humility is. He said he counted everything as rubbish. His title, his position as nothing. And he humbled himself so that he might know. The power, you know, of, of so it's not issue of just humiliation. That's just the, 
That's not the purpose. The purpose of God humiliating or arresting him is that he might be able to do what he asked him to do. God say, God told Ananiah that Paul is a vessel in my hand. That's my prayer to all of us. That we will be vessels in God's hands. Amen. So, we, we, we have exceeded with about three, five minutes this evening. And I want to believe that we are blessed. I want to pray this prayer for us. That God clothe us with humility. Lord, help us, Daddy. Daddy, don't let us be full of ourselves. Amen. Don't let us think too highly of ourselves. Amen. Daddy, Lord, clothe us. Give us the mind of Christ. Amen. By this teaching, Lord, give every one of us that have had this word the mind of Christ. Amen. So that we will not be full of ourselves. Amen. Daddy, Lord Almighty, we pray that all of us will run with this word and become doers of the word. Amen. The next time we see ourselves, we see ourselves clothed with humility. Amen. Right from this night, we we'll begin to walk in humility. Amen. Think with a humble heart. Amen. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, Thank Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord bless you. Amen. And the Lord keep you. Amen. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you Amen. and be gracious unto you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you Amen. and give you peace. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death, and so sin shall not have dominion over us. For the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of His holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. See you on Sunday. Sunday is our Thanksgiving Sunday and it's an amazing testimony. Please, if you have testimony, send us a note. You can send it. We can read it. So let's share the amazing thing God is doing in our life. Mm -hmm. And all the glory will be to Jesus. Amen. Amen. See you on Sunday. God bless you. Bye.